The moth is done in a number of different stitches. First of all, long and short stitch on the underneath here. And then a close blanket stitch done with long and short on the wings. The turkey rug stitch on the head. And we're going to do a salon stitch for the bit of knitwear here that the moth is supposed to be eating into. So starting with the long and short stitch, I've done a split back stitch outline and we're just going to fill the shape going outside of your split back stitch outline there with a long and short stitch. So go one way and then the other. You can angle it a bit if you need to. And your second row will go into the end of that stitch. And now this one here. Now, your second row will go all the way up here. And we want to take this all the way to the head, the bottom of the head, if we can. try and cover your split back stitch so you can do another row and you'll only really have a few stitches in between the wings there I'm running out of thread. So your final few stitches will go right up to the top. And now I'm going to show you the stitch for the wings, um, which is a, a close buttonhole done with long and short on the practice hoop. I've drawn a few ovals here, which is similar to what you've got on your moth wings, but it's bigger on this um, practice hoop. And we're going to do blanket stitch around the edge here, but we're going to do some long stitches and some short stitches. So come up just below the top of the line and then take a stitch down on the line. This is just to get you started. And come up just below your original thread. If you're left-handed, you'll just do your blanket stitch starting on the other side. And now I'm going to take a stitch into the shape and come up on the line, just as you would with normal blanket stitch. And then I'm going to take a long one into the shape and come up on the line. And now I'm going to take a short one and come up on the line. It's really important to come up on the line to get this oval shape. And now a long one, and it doesn't matter how long your stitches are or how short your stitches are. 
as for long and short stitch, they all need to be different lengths. So down, this is a short one now. And now a longer one. Now a short one and I'm trying to turn the corner a little bit. So when you come up on the line, make sure it's next to the previous stitch. And then go down on the line to finish but there are some gaps here because I've done some long and short stitches so just like long and short stitch I'm going to come up not on the edge but close to and take a long stitch all the way down to the end of the oval and then I'll do a shorter one and my stitches are going to go all the way down. If the, if the shape continued, they would go down here, but they're going to finish there. And then a longer one. But don't go right into the edge. You want that edge to be nice and neat. And you are splitting your thread as you're coming up through it. Don't worry if you don't, but that's it. So all this does is it fills the shape. You'll only need a couple of rows and it's going to be much smaller on the actual work. There you go. So if we were to do the next one, we would start just here. Go down there and come up just below to start off and then carry on along that line. Like that. Now I've worked this one side so you can see what it should look like and I'm going to start the other side. I think it's easier to start from the top and go towards the bottom but you do have to be careful not to pierce the bottom line of your blanket stitch. So if you're right handed come up at the top of this line here and then just go above it and just underneath where you started to get you started and then do well I've just done a long one but you could do a short one do a short one most important thing is to come up on the line of the curve So go all the way around the curve like that and make sure that your stitches as you come up are next to the previous one so you're not trying to leave a gap and then take a stitch down and now I'm going to Start near the top but not on the edge and take a long one and then a shorter one but they're all going to end in the same place. Just filling gaps here, you'll only need three or four stitches. Now I'm also in some places going to pierce my grey thread here because that's supposed to be in the background so that's fine if you do that and now let's do another one round here I can't see my blue lines very well but never mind 
So we'll come up just here, go to the a little bit further up, and then just underneath to start you off. So some stitches are longer and some stitches are shorter and I'm coming up through the loop next to that previous stitch. So I don't want to come up there, I want to come up right next to it. And then angle around. to do your next stitch. And then fill in any gaps like that. Okay, so I'm going to continue like that down the wing and I will return when I've done a little more. I've finished my two wings now and we're going to do the head in a turkey rug stitch. And if you remember, if you're right-handed, don't come up on the line, just come up a little way to the right of it. No need to put a knot in. Go to the left, then on the line, and then down on the right. Leave the loop and come up through it. And then go down a little way from that stitch, up at the end. So you're leaving that loop. Up at the end of the previous stitch, leave a loop on top and go down into the fabric and up through that top loop there. And then you can cut off this thread and do rows to fill the head in exactly the same way. So no knots needed, your next row will go down just like we did for the B, so we'll go down here. If you're left-handed, you'll start there. My turkey rug stitch is complete and I've cut off all my loops and it's fluffed up nicely for the head. If you want a reminder about turkey rug stitch, go back to the bumblebee where I show you um, how, we, how we cut off the threads. While I've got my dark thread, I'm just going to add in the legs and I'm doing a split back stitch. I've diverted from my line a little bit. So I want them going a little bit upwards. And we'll do the top antennae as well. You can either do straight stitches here or I'm just doing a split back stitch. So that's the moth and now we're going to complete this corner here and put a stitch called Ceylon stitch 
which looks a bit like knitting. So it's supposed to be some, some knitwear that the, that the moth is getting into. I'm going to show you the stitch on the practice hoop first. I've drawn a blue line here to indicate the hexagon outline and I've also done a few straight stitches at equal distances apart and this is going to be used to anchor your first row. This was done with the crawl needle. I've now changed to my tapestry needle because we're going to be weaving and I've come up just a bit to the left and slightly down from my first stitch. If you're left-handed, you'll come up here. And then go from right to left through your stitches, not going through the fabric, and don't pull it too tight. Keep the thread on the bottom. Like that. Important not to pull too tight. So my needle's going over my thread at the bottom. And that's the first row. And I'm going to anchor that then down through the fabric. And now you can go through some stitches at the back. You can jump if you're struggling to find a stitch, but I'm going to jump, but try and go through some stitches or finish off and start again. And then come up just below the first one. Now we're going to go now in the intersection of those those hoops there. So into that first one and up the second one. So where they where they cross over, take the needle through that. So this is not like a needle lace um, stitch, the detached buttonhole stitch that we did with the um, stitch wheel. This goes through the loop and through the other one. So where the two meet. And that's why they don't want to be too tight because you can't get your needle through. And at the end, just go into the fabric, finish off, or take some stitches across the back and start again. So now we've got to find the intersection. Which is there. That's the second row. It's not always as easy to find the stitches on the second row. And you can continue and do as many rows as you wish. I will try to show left-handers how to start next and then we'll do it on the, um, on the moth hexagon. Left-handers will pass 
from left to right through those little stitches there. So again, don't pull too tight. Keep your thread at the bottom. Sorry, I'm doing this with my right hand as well. And then take a stitch down. So finish off and then come up to the other side. And for your second row, you want to find the intersection where those threads cross and go in like that from left to right. And then the next one is like that. Sorry, I can't do this very well. And then like that. So continue and I hope that you'll find that of some assistance to get started if you're left-handed. Okay, I've done some little straight stitches um, around this corner here. And I've done one in the corner and four down each side. You could do a little bit more, but you've got to be careful that you don't go over the, the, the moth. But you, you, can't, you could do one more. I've come up then with my tapestry needle just to the left of this first stitch and down a bit. And I'm going to go through it from right to left, not pulling too tight. So I've got my thread at the bottom. And you can see now why we didn't want to do the outline of this hexagon quite yet. Okay, then go down into the fabric. Now you can finish off or perhaps take your thread through a couple of stitches at the back. And then start a little bit further down. Now we're looking to find the intersection of those two. So where they cross over and go through like that. So this is a little bit more tricky with this finer thread. more and down into the fabric and then a little bit further down so sort of going a bit to the left on that next row there and then you've got to find the right stitch there to take your 
needle through and carry on I'm going to continue off camera because I can't see it very well and I need to get closer to it so I'll come back when I've nearly finished I'm really finding that the key to this is to keep your stitches as loose as you can because then you can see your previous row easily the other thing that's sometimes useful is the previous colour that's been used so I can see I've used green before and I'm coming into a pink so next time I'll be able to pick up the pink so you can go as far as you like and you can see that the effect is of knitting really Can't see that one really, but no worries. So now I can pick up the pink, and I know it's the right row that I'm picking up. I think this will do as well. I think that will be enough so you can finish somewhere like that. And that's the, uh, the knitting. Now you can finish off this bit around the hexagon here in, in the stem stitch, which is whipped. And then I think we'll do the butterfly on the left, which um, I've had drawn for some while. So that's needing, needing stitching. So join me for that.